Today I'm going to talk about some tools in reverse engineering toolbar that uh, NX has in NX11. Great tools, extremely powerful. I'm going to demonstrate some of these tools on the side windscreen, how quick and easy it is to create a surface. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to limit the space that I'm working on by using this snip. Uh, you can also use curves as a boundary. If you draw some curves in, you can do that as well. But this is a this is one thing that I like to do in the, in the context of splitting up my mesh to uh, usable pieces, and then I can store those pieces on various layers and come back to them. I can do the same thing with boundaries, but um, uh, for me, it's just easier to use the snip function. So I want to snip a region. I'm going to pick this uh, STL, and then now that I have that picked, what's my boundary? So I'm going to put this into a view that I like, pretty close to what I need. And I'll just start picking. I'll pick a point over here. And I'm going to run all the way across over to here. And just come up and over. And as you can see, I'm picking a fairly large area. I don't want to get too close to these edges because there's a lot of issues with those edges. I'm going to middle mouse button it because uh, what happens is the SDLs, they come in and they start doing all sorts of crazy things with the shape. So I don't want to necessarily capture those. Now that I have that, I'm going to edit a copy, make sure I don't modify the original, and I'm going to snip and OK. Now that I have that, if I come in here and pick, you can see there's my original. I'll just blank that out. And then this, I'll just delete. What I'm left with is the area of the STL that I want to work in. Now as we visualize this, you can see that there's some areas on this that aren't uh, necessarily super smooth or fantastic, right? Because what's ended up happening is you have uh, a scan, and sometimes the scan is going to pick up some noise. Now you can go in there and modify that and edit that out if you want to. Or in this case, the tool I'm going to use is what's called Fit Surface. With this fit surface, it's going to give me tools that allow me to sort of wash over these rough areas. So with this, the what I want to pick is my STL. Now as soon as I pick it, you'll notice it dumps the surface in. Again, it's going to be parametrically rectangular. And once that surface is in, <clears throat> see it gives me this deviation gauge. It's 0.75 millimeters off. And it's in that area that I was seeing the most amount of roughness on that surface. So this is an acceptable amount. Now the next thing you, I like to do with this is I like to determine how this is going to be fit. Okay, so what's happening is the surface is going to go in on the STL, but I'm now I'm worried about the parameterization of the actual control points. Now I don't have a display of the control points. I'm just going to leave it like this and select OK because I can come back and modify my surface. But here I'm going to go into analysis and pick my surface and I'm going to show poles. Now once I have that done you can see that those poles are kind of candy wampus. They kind of go everywhere. Now that being said I'm going to go back into my fit surface and I'm going to go instead of using an orientation as you can see my orientation is saying force the U in this direction force the V in this direction and I can modify my orientation if I want to I can say best fit. Now what you'll see happen is the surface is no longer parametrically rectangular to the world, right? It's no longer it's no longer U and V parallel to ground. It is now uh, off at a funky angle, and for some people this may not be acceptable. You have a twist in the surface, so it may make modifications to the surface a little bit difficult later on. But you'll note that you know, I still have the same relative amount of deviation control points are a little bit smoother. Um, I can also fit to a vector so I can come in here and specify a vector that I want. What's my vector? I'll pick here. So again I get something that's relatively similar to the best fit in this case and I can if I have a CSIS set up or I, I can specify that CSIS to do the same. Now again for me personally I like to have Let's do, let me turn off my analysis. This is my bad. I apologize. There we go. Now, <clears throat> with this, if I go in and let me double click on my surface to modify it. 
if I go in and go back to my orientation, again, I, I, like, I like keeping things more true to the world, and I begin messing around with the degrees and dropping this, you'll notice that a lot of those control points are gone. I get an incredibly smooth surface, and you'll notice that in this area over here, I have a 0.84 millimeter deviation. So again, less than a mil in an area that we know is bad. But the control points on this now are really smooth. You can see how much that's cleaned up. Because I've simplified the surface so much, the uh, control points by nature for this smooth out considerably. I also have this smoothing factor. So I can turn up and down the smoothing factor. If I go to zero, then uh, in this case, you're not going to see too much. If I go to zero, what ends up happening is, is it matches the control points to the mesh a lot closer. So if I turn this up back to five and five, you can see what's going on is, is um, it's the mesh is being seen as still very uh, kind of rough. With that smoothing factor, when I turn that way up, you'll see it smooths things out a little bit. And what this does is, again, is um, internally, it doesn't physically do, you can't see it happen, is that it smooths out the STL a little bit. So you can opt to use the smoothing factor, but again, what it's doing is it's smoothing out the STL internally to give you a more, uh, uh, like a smoother mesh running through that. But again, for me, I like to start off with the simplest surface that I possibly can. There's my orientation. My control points look pretty good. I'm off by 0.84. I've torqued up my smoothing factor all the way up. If I, if I turn this down, you'll see in this case, there isn't much there to smooth out. Okay, so here, you'll see there isn't really anything going on because I've simplified the surface as much as I possibly can. Select my OK. And you'll see down here my maximum error. Here's my average error. My average error is 0.12. It's minuscule. So across these, this entire surface to that scan data, I am experiencing a very small amount of deviation. Select OK. And there is my surface. Now, for some people, this may be good. Uh, you may actually need to make this surface a little bit bigger. And the way you do that, again, is you just go into surface and you have the enlarge tool. Right? You can come in here, do an enlarge. And you'll notice that um, if I just say all and I go up a little bit, the nice thing about the enlarge in this case is it's modifying the surface. It's growing it, but it's keeping my control point layout. So the control points themselves aren't necessarily being modified per se. They are in the, in the sense of it's making the surface larger but it's keeping the original base surface as it is and modifying those control points to keep that original base surface as it is. So here at this point, you can see, you know, my surface starts to walk out and do some kind of crazy things. Maybe, maybe, oops, let me go to my enlarge. Maybe I, I trim this back a little bit. There we are. Just grow it out a little bit. Not as much as I had last time. And then this is where I would go in and start using things like my X form. You can pick my surface. And then now, uh, in this case, normal is perfectly acceptable. You can begin modifying this. You throw a deviation gauge on there to get to what you need on there as far as deviation wise. You can verify that. And just start pulling and pushing your control points. go along polygon clean those up nobody wants ugly control points and I would go back and forth a little bit more to clean this up and, and get it a little bit closer to what I need but what you end up with as you can see is a surface quickly very very quickly that has a nice parameterization to the control points uh, if I do a quick render on or I'm sorry not a render analysis on this and I go into my reflection. Here, let's do that. You can see I have a pretty nice ultra fine. There we go. Pretty nice reflections going on this thing. Not so bad. 
go to my line images. And you got a little bit of work to do. I'd say a little bit of work to do up here, a little bit of work to do down there. We saw that earlier. I mean, the control points are obviously not still perfect. I would pull this out, pull this down, so on and so forth to get that a little bit closer to what I need. But I end up with a nice parametrically rectangle, very clean layout, uh, parameterization again to those control points, very quick and very easy.